It's about where is this country going to? And it's very interesting for me because when I hear these stories, I, they make me very happy because uh, people thought or said I was... Uh, anyway, today they tell me this person is my friend, then this person is my enemy, this person is my friend. And you know, Nigerians think friendship or enmity, they are all inheritors. You, can, you must inherit my friends or inherit my enemies. And I meet politicians whom I was associated with and who were telling me yesterday, one disciple, the same politicians are telling around, turning around to me to say, why are you saying this kind of thing? I remember one time I said, I went to, I went to the villa, Obasanjo was president then. And somebody said to me, I had said something and it upset them. And sometimes, as the governors know, these people who surround you feel more hot. They cry more than they believed. So, and when you talk, they say, you don't like our government, or you don't like our president, or you don't like our principal. What they are talking about is their pocket. It's not, it's not the principal or the president. But this man walked up to me and said, why did you have to say, you know, the villa is here, the president is here, he's accessible to you, why do you have to speak? I said, my dear, when Obasanjo was in prison, I had access to Abacha. I could have reached him. So there is a time for every... There are certain things... My grandmother used to say, the, the stomach is not meant for food alone. There are certain things we can talk about. If I go to the villa, is it to sit down and drink coffee and chat, chat with the president and go? I have an obligation beyond the confines of power. And when we talk about this country, we might talk about friendship. But the sense of urgency we require to fix this country goes beyond the boundaries of friendship. So the question is, If we, it's like we, the conversation we had about privatization. And I said to people, why are you talking, shouldn't be talking about privatization. Nigeria is already a private, is already privatized anyway. The governor said, yeah, only 35 people own the country. It's already in private hands. What you should be thinking of is, how do you open their hands so that the rest of us can have something that belongs? So don't talk about privatization. The country is already a private, a private state. You know, I mean, for any novelist, this is the most wonderful opportunity to be a novelist in Nigeria because all the ingredients for every writer, they're all here. And all you need to do is to look at what's up. Every day, the matter is not for laughing. It's not a laughing matter, but you just know God bless all these human beings who keep giving us a reason to just keep laughing. I remember reading something the other day. Somebody said to me, he said, this priest went to a man who is dying. The priest looks at him, he said, Oh God, you are on your way, please, renounce sin, renounce devil who is the custodian of sin, renounce him now, renounce him, so I will say the final prayer for you. The man kept quiet. He said, I say, renounce the devil, renounce the devil. The man kept quiet. Father looked at him, he said, why don't you want to re- renounce the devil? He said, Father, I don't know where I'm going, make a no provoke person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, so I don't want to make I know. I make I know. What if I go? If I, what if I go? I end up in front of the devil. He said, "Just pray for me. Pray for me. Don't tell me to renounce." <laughs> but the question, and I think the most fundamental question is, and we are speaking on a wonderful day of our independence. I read a story about a holy man who always had an encounter with God and he always went to the forest to a particular spot where he would pray and he would dance and encounter God God will speak to him then he died then his disciple who used to follow him knew the way to the forest and knew the spot where his master used to pray and knew the prayer so he continued and he will pray and God will appear and answer him. Then he himself died. The one who followed him knew the forest, knew the spot, but didn't know the prayer. So he f- went to the spot, didn't know the prayer, but God still appeared and spoke to him. Then he died. The next one came. He knew the road to the forest, but didn't know the spot. And so he picked a spot. He prayed, God still had his prayer. Then he died. 
Then his disciple took over. This one didn't know the road to the forest, didn't know the prayer, and didn't know the, the dance. But he stood wherever he stood and prayed to God, and God still met him. Uh, it's, it's a Jewish joke, but it's just to say, God has not left us yet. I'll tell you a story. Just before our elections, I was invited to Germany, and I think, except this audience, I have not had to address an audience of that magnitude. And it was to speak about the elections in Nigeria. This was in October 2015, yes, in October. At that time, I think our elections had already been scheduled for, was it February? So I, they led me through the back. And when they opened the stage, I came in, I could not believe the crowd of people. Not a single black person, except myself, and one Sudanese man who was somewhere else. And I'm looking at this audience, you mean, all these Germans have, all these white Germans have gathered to hear about Nigeria. Okay, so I tried to be as convincing as I could. And I think they were quite impressed. Let me put it that way. When we finished, one of the, it was time for questions and answers. One of them said to me, why, why are you so optimistic about Nigeria? And he said, I came here to listen to you because I had you deliver a lecture in Frankfurt. Why do you remain so optimistic about Nigeria? And he said, I've read the things because the Germans asked me to write something about Boko Haram when it started. And he said, look, we are hearing a completely different conversation. And why do, where do you get your inspiration from to sound so optimistic about Nigeria? I said, well, I'm a priest. The major commodity I market is hope. <laughs> okay? Okay, it is hope. And hope is never in recession. Because St. Paul says, hope it doesn't go into recession. Because that is the hope that enabled Martin Luther King to say, you know what? We refuse to accept the very top notion that in the bank of opportunity, that the bank of opportunity can never be bankrupt. It can never be bankrupt. But I said, no, God is not finished with us. Because this country called Nigeria, God has given us an assignment he hasn't given to any nation. No nation in the world has the challenge that Nigeria has. That is why when you hear me sound angry, frustrated, but quite optimistic, I have my reasons. Nobody has the assignment that Nigeria has. Saudi Arabia has Muslims. The Middle East is full of Muslims, but nobody, they don't, none of them, none of these so-called, call them Muslim countries or Islamic countries, they don't have our assignment. Americans, the Europeans who are predominantly Christian, they don't have our challenge. Because nowhere in the world do you have a 50-50% of Christians and Muslims except in Nigeria. So when we find ourselves fighting, we will fight. But we have an appointment with destiny. Now, when I finished, at the end as I was going, one young lady came to me, and that's why I'm telling you this story. She came to me and shook my hand. And she said she gave me some papers. And I looked at them. And it was a drawing of a rosary. So and I said, what is this? And it was a project of this, the, 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 a movement of young children age 5 to 10 or 14. Across the whole of Germany, who were being mobilized, the target was 1 million children praying the rosary for the success of Nigeria's election. So, when these elections came and went, no, God is not finished with us yet. Now, when I therefore say the things I say about where we should be going, it's because I believe that we have a sense of urgency, a sense of now. Because I think it was Ojuku who said if God wanted him to be looking at the Bible, he would have given him eyes. Nobody suggests we should forget the past. But it will be a tragedy if our future is defined by our past. And so when I talk to people and they talk about Jonathan and Isaiah, I say, no, 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 it's not about, not about Jonathan. If Jonathan is a criminal and needs to go to prison, let him go. But that's not the point. He took the president himself, President Buhari, one year, and he's a great man because he had the courage to acknowledge and validate what I had said. 
He said it when he spoke to the bishops' conference and also said it publicly. Jonathan was a gentleman because he listed all the things that happened. And my argument was once we had that opportunity for takeoff with favorable weather, 